Hello and welcome back to the Umbrella Academy. I am Mir Niaz. In this lecture we will discuss comparison of syndihydroxylation with OSO4 and KMNO4. Use of cooxidants or catalysts with OSO4. Worked examples on syndihydroxylation. We have seen that epoxidation of an alkene followed by acidic hydrolysis gives anti-dihydroxylation of the double bond. Reagents are also available for the dihydroxylation of alkenes with synstereochemistry. The two most common reagents for this purpose are osmium tetroxide, OSO4, and potassium permanganate, KMNO4. When an alkene is treated with osmium tetroxide, OSO4, a cyclic osmate ester is produced. Osmium tetroxide adds across the alkene in a concerted process. In other words, both oxygen atoms attach to the alkene simultaneously. This effectively adds two groups across the same face of the alkene, hence the syn addition. The cyclic osmate ester that results can be isolated and then treated with either aqueous sodium sulfite, Na2SO3, or sodium bisulfite, NaHSO3, to produce a diol. Oxidizing agents such as hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, or tertiary amine oxides, can also be used to hydrolyze the osmate ester and reoxidize osmium to osmium tetroxide. The regenerated osmium tetroxide catalyst continues to hydroxylate more molecules of the alkene. A cold, dilute solution of potassium permanganate also hydroxylates alkenes with synstereochemistry, with slightly reduced yields in most cases. Like osmium tetroxide, permanganate adds to the alkene double bond to form a cyclic ester, a manganate ester in this case, which however, is not isolable. The basic solution hydrolyzes the manganate ester, liberating the glycol and producing a brown precipitate of manganese dioxide, MnO2. Overall, both reagents produce cis-1,2-diol through syndihydroxylation. Although KMnO4 is inexpensive and readily available, its use is limited by its insolubility in organic solvents. To prevent further oxidation of the product 1,2-diol, the reaction mixture must be kept basic with added OH. Also 4 is a more selective oxidant than KMnO4 and is soluble in organic solvents, it is toxic and expensive. To deal with these issues, several methods have been developed that use a cooxidant that serves to regenerate OSO4 as it is consumed during the reaction. In this way, OSO4 functions as a catalyst so that even small quantities can produce large quantities of the diol. Typical cooxidants include N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, NMO, and tertiary butyl hydroperoxide. In the catalytic process, dihydroxylation of the double bond converts the OS8 plus oxidant into an OS6 plus product, which is then reoxidized by NMO to OS8 plus. This OS8 plus reagent can then be reused for dihydroxylation and the catalytic cycle continues. This has been termed as upjohn dihydroxylation. In addition to its synthetic value, the permanganate oxidation of alkenes provides a simple chemical test for the presence of an alkene double bond. When an alkene is added to a clear, deep purple, aqueous solution of potassium permanganate, the solution loses its purple color and becomes the murky, opaque brown color of MnO2. Although there are other functional groups that decolorize permanganate, few do it as quickly as alkenes. This test, for presence of double bond with KMnO4, is called Bayer test. Let us try to write the products of these reactions. In this example, treating an alkene with cold potassium permanganate and sodium hydroxide results in the syn addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, the product has no chirality centers, so stereochemistry is not a relevant consideration. 
in this case treating an alkene with cold potassium permanganate and sodium hydroxide results in the syn addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, two new chirality centers are generated, and we expect a syn addition and enantiomeric pair as products. However, in this particular case, whether we write the hydroxyl groups on top face or bottom face, the molecule has internal mirror plane of symmetry. Thus, the product is actually a single meso compound. Treating an alkene with catalytic osmium tetroxide and NMO results in the addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this, if OH is placed on top face, the methyl already present goes to bottom face. Same here, OH on bottom face so that methyl on top face. Treating an alkene with catalytic osmium tetroxide and a suitable cooxidant, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide, results in the addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, only one chirality center is created, so we expect both possible enantiomers. That means, formation of the initial cyclic osmate ester can occur on either face of the pi bond with equal likelihood. In this case, the net result will be the addition of OH and OH across the alkene. The regiochemical outcome is not relevant because the two groups added are identical. We expect the reaction to proceed via a syn addition. In this case, two chirality centers are formed, so we expect the following two products. Because of the presence of a third chirality center, these two products are diastereomers rather than enantiomers. Treating this transalkene with catalytic osmium tetroxide and NMO results in the syn addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, two new chirality centers are generated, so we expect only the pair of enantiomers that would result from syn addition. Anti dihydroxylation of cis 2 butene gives enantiomeric pair as product. Thus, this is syn dihydroxylation and this is anti dihydroxylation. Recall that this can be converted into this via 180 degrees rotation. Same can be done in this case. The configuration of each chirality center can be assigned to demonstrate that the products are indeed the same for these two reaction sequences. This compound is 2R, 3R whereas this is also 2R, 3R. Thus these two compounds are same. Thus syndihydroxylation of a trans 2-butene results in the same products as antidihydroxylation of a cis 2-butene. To dihydroxylate an alkene with syn stereochemistry, which is the better reagent? Osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate? Osmium tetroxide gives better yields, but permanganate is cheaper and safer to use. The answer depends on the circumstances. If the starting material is only 2 mg of a compound 15 steps along in a difficult synthesis, we use osmium tetroxide. The better yield is crucial because the starting material is precious and expensive, and little osmic acid is needed. If the dihydroxylation is the first step in a synthesis and involves 5 kg of the starting material, we use potassium permanganate. The cost of buying enough osmium tetroxide would be prohibitive, and dealing with such a large amount of a volatile, toxic reagent would be inconvenient. On such a large scale, we can accept the lower yield of the permanganate oxidation.